Hello, and sorry for being late, but this is the Anime Outlook, and today I'm going to be talking about World Trigger Chapter 212 and 213. Now I know I'm late and I do apologise, but stuff has just been busy lately and I don't want to bore you of any of the facts. Now, moving on to the chapters that were released, a nice double release from the sensei himself. These are very interesting chapters, they show us deep, a deeper dive into Sua's character overall, and gives us a little more information, something that, of course, we love to have and he loves to give. But before I go into the review of the chapters and explain what happened and give my points of view on what happens in the chapters, please do hit that like and subscribe button. Uh, I love you all, for everyone that supports me and everyone that hits those buttons, I love you all. So now moving on to chapter 212 now we left off last chapter 211 with a sort of cliffhanger of the call between sewer and Kadera. starting this chapter we're getting some relief on that it isn't the fact that they both agreed to bring in phones so they can contact each other like i thought might have been possible possible. It's more as we've seen within the first page I get told I'm completely wrong. Of course I was. But regarding the use of communication devices, agents are free to contact any other agent except for former squad mates. So Kadara and Sua are just talking, asking whether Sua would give him the personal scores for his squad, for the A-rank evaluation category. And Sua's just being being a little cheeky here and going, why should I tell you? He's saying, how would telling you help us? And just telling Kadera to think things through, going, what good does that do to me? I don't care about your scores. And for some reason, throughout this chapter, although I love it, we're getting so much Ikoma in this chapter, just doing his random shit, like, like cutting vegetables, sleeping, just cooking food. It's just very odd. But moving on to the next page, Sua shows Kadara a bit of his power and a bit of his force as a leader, going, just because my squad is in dead last, you think you're safe dealing with us losers? Is that what you're thinking? Just just having a little fun with Kadara, but also putting him in his place, thinking that he shouldn't just go be blasé about asking another team leader, an enemy leader, for information. But Sua gives the overall information and just tells Kadara that each member got around 15 points each and just gives him a little lesson. Now, this is the main part of what I love about the two chapters that got released. We get to see Sua actually be a proper leader. And it's, and to start off with, it's not even for his own squad. It's for Kadera, a different leader. This, for me, proves that Sua is management material. He is He has the ability to be a higher up, support the peons below, and just overall, be a nice guy. He's just telling Kadera that if it's info you're after, or you're trying to make a deal, you've got to speak clear and nice, otherwise people won't know how to react to you. And just give, gives him a little tip. But what is it that Kadera is so worried about? Something that's bugging him. So he then goes and asks Kurama's squad for their A-rank evaluations, and Kurama being the lovely guy who he is, the majestic angel of border. He gi gives away information and just talks with Kadera through what he's thinking. Kadera's problem is that his squad didn't get particularly high scores for the A-rank evaluation test because he worries that he gave less time to voice his thoughts and less time for discussion. As we see from Kadera's squad, they they devoted a healthy chunk of time to the special assignment and got a decent amount of points, an average of 13, and Kadera's squad got only single digits of scores. Now, I, I will say this chapter will review will fly by because there's not too much to say and just go on about. However, it's very nice to just see that each squad leader has their own methods. We're seeing Sua being the smirky and teasing kind of leader, but getting to the overall point. We see Kurama being just a nice, genuine guy, giving genuine advice. And we see Kodera, someone who's trying to think things through and think of the best possible solutions, going step by step to make his squad win. And of course, we're seeing a Ikoma just cooking. Now Kodera gets asked, should we really be so worried about this? Those A rank points represent such a small fraction of the total breakdown, it's hard to imagine them having much of an effect. But Kodera brings up a very valid point on which they don't know how the point system works, and he doesn't know if 
the special A rank evaluations have some sort of multiplier or formula to, to them, or if the special surprise assignments are more valuable and have a multiplier. There are so many elements within this test that we have not been revealed to and they've got to keep an eye out for. Now this proves another point of what the test is useful for. It's making sure that the border agents are thinking things through and thinking of all the imaginable possibilities. But as we see from later on in this chapter as well, we see that Kadera Squad still got second place even with such low scores. So I'm going to assume that the multiplier, if there is any at all, isn't particularly high, and there's not particularly much for him to worry about. But it's nice to see him just thinking about his squad and thinking and showing us that he is somewhat of a pragmatic warrior, which, to be honest, I value in a leader. I think a leader is someone who one should be stoic, of course, in times of need. But when he's just thinking about his squad, about the future plans, he needs to be careful and calculated. And that's what Kadera is doing exactly. Then we see that the A-rank agents have given him a minus for being a worried leader, leading to worried subordinates. But then he gets points, and I completely agree with this fact that a worried leader is not something to bring down the morale of the group. It isn't about his own score, he's not being selfish, he's, he's concerned about his squad mates. So he's using critical thinking, and it's about helping the squad. And I feel that any squad that sees a leader doing their best will be glad and thankful. And well, that, that's, that's for me personally. So I think it's not too much to worry about and shouldn't get a huge deduction of points. Then, then after the Kadara squad does some thinking, does some talking with each other, they come up with the resolution of just they'll be more mindful of the A-rank evaluations and be sure to speak their minds at every opportunity and just be a more friendly unit as a team because I feel that's the predominant problem. They weren't working wholly together as a team and were just thinking about being, being the best, getting the points and being productive when this whole test is just about, about the squads getting together and showing their prowess at being a team because that's why Border has units in the first place. And then we get to see everyone eating a nice meal, eating lunch, and probably the highlight for me of these two chapters, we get to see that Ikoma is a really good cook and his reasoning is quite hilarious. Ikoma of course was just looking for a hobby to be a chick magnet and Jin told him to learn how to cook and Ikoma cries and cries going, bless you bro, bless you. And this is just so funny because Ikoma, or oh, anything Ikoma does is funny these days, it's just so random, so out of place, yet so spot on with his character. Then back in the operating room, there's some talk about different sort of menus and how the leaders have worked out on menus and worked out a whole schedule for the seven days. Not too much to go on, not too much to make that make comments on, but we do learn that Sewer has quite a mixed response from different agents within Border, such as one agent says Sewer tends to fly by the seat of his pants, but that's was a well-considered move. However, another mentions that he's pretty good at taking charge and planning. So this really shows the two sides of Sewer. He's got his, his actual leadership skills, and then he's got, got his casual side. Just These chapters are just giving us more in-depth information into Sewer as a character, and that he's more complex than we might think. He, and then later on in the chapter, we, we get to see the operator's room. Now this was something that I thought would be would have been a big secret and I was thinking that maybe it was possibly going to be a, a bigger thing than it is. But the operating room opens at 9pm. But before we learn about that, we learn how each person showers and is kept clean. Now we're told there's a strange machine and the clothes, you put your clothes in the machine and they are broken down into Trion and then reconstructed as new items. So it just proves us to the point of which why they weren't allowed to use their own uniform as well as it's just a nice world building a bit of information. It's very simple but nice to know. And last but not least we have the huge problem of what will Hughes do about his horn. Now he's making up loads of excuses for he's a morning sh showerer or that and that he has to have his own bed because he's Canadian and that he's making up a whole new trope about Canadians saying that they can't sleep in the company of others. I wish does confuse the squad thinking are Canadians really that fussy? And saying that in movies and TV shows, Canadians are just like everyone else. But... <laughs> 
he, he's just is adamant. Lies, all of it's lies. The media does not portray Canadians accurately, and they have to have their own rooms to sleep with. It, it's, it's funny, it's nice, and it's a valid excuse because everyone in Border tends to be Japanese and just doesn't know too much about Canadians. It, it's, it's a good scapegoat. However, I think this might come to bite him in the arse in the future when maybe one of them meets an actual Canadian just out of nowhere, maybe. I'm not sure. I think that would be pretty funny. Then everyone start goes off to sleep. Then to end this chapter off, everyone goes to sleep and you've got Asamu just trying to th calm down. He's sharing his room with Sua and just contemplating that they are last place on day one and it seems to be weighing a bit heavily on him and he's focused he's going to work hard tomorrow and make up for his mistakes but then Sua wants to talk to him about something and that ends chapter 212 now as i said previously not too much going on in, ch in the chapters just a lot more information and just giving us the aftermath of the initial a rank evaluation now moving on to chapter 213 we get to see a very nice conversation between Sua and Osamu. Sua actually being a very, very soft-hearted and sweet leader, in my opinion. And this actually boosts him very highly on my rankings of characters. Of just the fact that, one, we get revealed some of the information about the Battle Sims games. And that they're making each squad face each other, which means 10 matches in total each day. The issue is that the units they're using in battle won't be them. It'll, it'll be an approximation of their stats and logistics. And Sua brings up the valid point of that. In terms of battle resources, Asamu could possibly be a burden. And not saying he's a weak link, it's just that Asamu style is that of the underdog. It's not someone who's very capable, it's not someone who's very strong. It's someone who's smart, who's, who comes up with unique resolutions and pro is a problem solver. So when you're doing a game and playing a game that re relies heavily on stats and not intelligence and ingenuity, it will become- Osama will become a break in the chain. A, a break in the chain. And it's, it is a problem. But Sue's just saying, if even if Osamu ends up slowing them down, he's already taking that into account. So he's he's trying to take the burden off of Osamu. Because I feel that he's seen that Osamu takes this test very seriously. Takes his role as a leader, as a somewhat hero, very seriously. And he's got a lot of pressure on him as the weakling, as he knows he is the underdog. He's, he's always trying to do his best. And I think Sua might have either been told that by Reiji, or is just noticing this from the first day of being together. So he's just telling Asamu, don't keep quiet, keep just talk to the team if you've got a problem, and keep the good ideas coming. But Asamu, and then Asamu brings up a valid point of that, if they do end up losing, Katari will be furious, and I... I will say, on this panel, I love Katori in this. That face is so, so hilarious. And she's so angry. But Sua, yet again, shows us he is an observant leader. And he's, in merely a day, gotten to know his squad quite well. He's saying Katori's got a sharp tongue. And, so, and that, as so long as she's yapping away, they're in good shape. And that she's in a pretty good mood. And we get to learn that Katori is... When, when Katori's pissed off, she's not a talker, she's the silent type. Which I kind of relate to because I'm very similar in that aspect. I like to moan, I like to make a big deal out of small things because I, I think it's funny. And But if I'm really pissed off, if I'm really annoyed, then yeah, I get quite silent and quite brooding enough in fact. So I, I'm just relating more to Katori in knowing this information. But back to Sua. He's just saying that Katri is the ace, so and that she was actually the top of the pack during the test. Which I wasn't expecting that. I was expecting Katri to be quite lazy. I mean, she might have been lazy f as what we've seen, but she's just such a genius and so talented that even being spaced out, she can just have high overall scores. So, so we're saying keep Kat if we keep Katri in a good mood then everything, then it would be a good chance to 
earn some A rank evaluation points. And he just co and he compliments Sua co and he compliments Asamu on dealing with the crisis earlier in the day about the laptop and his lack of Trion, saying he kept calm and he carried on and just says, "Don't sweat anything. Just come. Stuff was bound to go wrong on the first day." And it's really nice to see this side of Sua and just being a true leader. And then we and then in this chapter we move on to the second day, set the first morning of the test. They wake up, they brush their teeth, and they put their tri triggers on. <laughs> Asami saying good morning to Kateri, and Kateri looks absolutely abysmal. She is not a morning person from the looks of this. But moving on, they have nice sandwiches, and we get to learn that le sleeping in the capsule is actually really nice, for Oki at least, saying it was the best sleep of his life, and that he's fine sticking in the capsule. But personally, I think it would be a good idea for all of them to get treatment in the capsule to at least know what it's like, because from what I assume, that's what they'll be sleeping in on the away mission. Because these two chapters, it's very easy to forget they're actually on a test, and this arc seems very just discombobulated and away from from the entirety of World Trigger itself. It feels so separate, but that's just the illusion I feel because they're just in these trapped containers. And that's kind of the point because this is supposed to mimic being on the away mission, being stuck in your spaceship on a journey to another neighborhood. So I think this is a very accurate representation of the away mission for us viewers. And I feel that it's genius because I, the fact that I feel so separate from the rest of the story during this arc, it you've got to think how separated do they feel being just in this box with no windows as Asami has mentioned in this chapter it must be quite hard but then but then we get given the news that in the operate that the operators have to write a written report on the next page and that the written report is just tick boxes fill out some fields and they'll compare the notes with to what the a rank judges said and now i'm really interested in what these boxes were what these questions were is it talking about the other members like i thought it'd be like i predict it would be the sort of situation in which the operator has to be clearly and really observant and really accurate in her assessment of the team members because they've got to manage them from behind the scenes however we haven't been told and that's and that's the prediction i'm sticking with do tell me your predictions in the comments and just tell me how you felt about this chapter and these chapters in general but we then get to see the operator's room and some of the equipment that will be used for the battle simulations Kateri, and that's pretty much it for the sewer squad and then we go on to the wakamura squad where we were last left off with Wakamura being very indecisive about Hughes' opinion on the somewhat cheating method. And Wakamura shows his path as a leader, as a soldier. He is earnest, he wants to keep going things the right way. He doesn't want to be snide, he doesn't want to be cheeky. And he explicitly says, that they said no cheating allowed, but leaving it as an option, maybe they're waiting to see how we act as soldiers. Are we someone who cheats? Are we someone who plays around? Or are we strict and to the point? Which is a very valid point. Border could be assessing their soldiers as, are they loyal? Are they worthy? Are they just? You never know what the A-rank evaluators will be thinking. So with Wakamura sticking to his style and his beliefs, I respect his decision to not go along with Hughes's plan and so do his teammates agreeing to keep it all above board then and lastly we get to see the first copying files of the stats of the of the unit squads for the battle simulations on day two of the sealed environment test now this is all these are the main points of what happened during these two chapters and all I'll say is, Sua is phenomenal I've really grown to like him during this test and it's only we're only on the beginning of the second day, so I can imagine that by the end of this test, I will absolutely love Sua with all my heart. Might, might possibly be one of my favourite characters after uh, this arc. But do tell me what you guys think in the comments, and tell me, did you have any problems with this chap with these chapters? And just put a woo-ha for the sensei putting a lot of hard work into making these chapters and doing a double release this month. Thank you very much for watching, I hope you have a lovely day, and I love you all. Goodbye.